frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Foots at Football Daft, we are very proud to be sponsored by G4 Claims because they're just cool people, aren't they, Trips? They are cool people. We love them. We love them. So, remember, if you've been in a road traffic accident and you're not at fault, G4 Claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with the complete accident management support you require. They will recover their costs from the at-fault party, sort you out with a like-for-like vehicle replacement, and they will also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and return to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they will recover the pre-accident value for your car and write you a big, fat check for it. And best of all, it won't cost you a penny as they charge the at-fault insurance direct. G4 claims don't cold call, they don't buy data, and once they have processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is, Nicole and the team over there won't take on your case if they don't think they can help. So, if you have been in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, get on to G4 claims on 01698 767 172. That's 01698 767 172. Or get them at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims, Not at Fault Claims. Maybe. Right, let's welcome a man who's just won League One with Partick Thistle and has picked up silverware with Ross County and Rangers and starred for Aberdeen with over 250 appearances. It is none other than Richard Foster. How you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? Not bad. Hey, thanks for doing, joining us on a sunny day, sitting on in front of your computer on a sunny day. I bet you're glad you agreed to this. To be fair, I've just done my third day back pre-season, so I can't, my legs can't move anyway. So. <laughs> How's that going, mate? It's been good. It's been it's been tough. Um, it's better than last year because obviously last year I had nine months off and then had to go back into it, so that was that was tough. Right. But this year we had six weeks off, which is more standard. So tiring, but um, yeah, achievable this year. But still, it's pre season, so it's minging. My legs you are. Must be, you must be buzzing though, getting back into the championship. And folk could wrote you off halfway through the season. You know what I mean? So uh, to come back and and win the league was what an achievement, eh? I think it was. I think, you know, people had, had rightly written us off halfway through the season because, well, the first half of the season, we never won enough games. We never scored enough goals. Um, and then we, that wee break probably helped us, came back. Um, and to be fair, the boys were excellent. Um, Tiffany, Zach Rodden, Brian Graham led the line really well. And, you know, we, we basically just outscored most teams, uh, managed to keep a, a good few clean sheets as well. So it was it was good. It was um, it was good to end it on such a kind of positive run and hopefully we take that into the champ this year. Mate, probably, you... It must have helped as well that Falkirk absolutely shot the bed. It's, it's one of the, you know, um, it's one of the biggest <laughs> conclusions I've ever seen. So just saw John at the top there is a big Falkirk man. Oh, so. He's a, he's a Falkirk supporter, <laughs> so, you know. I knew that was coming up. I knew that was going to come up. But I know, I know. We absolutely shot the bed, uh, Richard. So you were well worth it in the end. Absolutely well worth it in the end. I think, you, you know, we, we obviously knew we were on a good run. But you were, we thought at one point we were like, right, let's get ourselves ready for the playoffs. We're going to need to go up through the playoffs because we're, we're no, we're not going to, I think we're, not to rub it in, but we're eight points behind Falkirk at yes, one point, we eight points ahead of them. Wait, um, was there not a night he's played Falkirk and absolutely spanked them 5-1 uh, or something? Yeah, and, just, just John, we were doing an interview, <laughs> we were doing a podcast that day and the game was coming on that night and producer John actually said, I can't even watch us tonight. I'm not even watching it. And he was right because you absolutely rattled them, didn't you? Aye, so, that was the night. That's the night we won the league. I went through the, the whole night. I was sitting there just texting John. There's another one in. There's another one in. There's another one in. <laughs> anyway, sorry, John. Sorry about that, John. All right. right. Uh, Richard, so let's just, obviously, let's kick off with, obviously, the Euros. How are you enjoying the Euros? It's actually been really nice to have Aye. football back in the TV. I know it's um, we've had that last season, but see football with fans, it makes such a difference. 
it makes it mean it does make. the Hunger Game other day, sixty seven thousand fans there. You know, it was just that's that's what as a football player, that's why you want to play football. You want to play in front of stadiums, you want to play in front of fans. Um of and last year was just weird, really, really strange. Um and you know, the, the top teams obviously in, in Scotland and even England, I think England especially suffered because the games were just really quite flat. I thought most of them, whereas I thought in Scotland we still managed to get decent games for the most part. Um, I really enjoyed it, mate. I enjoyed last season. Uh, I, like, I, I like, really enjoyed it. I, 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 I mean, I, 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 just... I, I genuinely believe at the start of the season, I think having no fans probably helped Rangers. Uh, I, I, think... agree, I agree with you, Richard. The top team in Scotland definitely suffered. So, um, well, <laughs> We'll but, sorry, mate, you broke, you broke up there, Todd. I didn't hear that there. Uh, but, uh, anyway, I think mo- once, they, once they started winning, I think um, it, it was kind of rubbish that they never got into to Ibrox or whatever to see them. But um, can you imagine the Pelters Celtic could have got if they had fans in? Oof. Oh, fuck's sake. That'd have been brilliant, man. But like, but like you're saying, though, Richard, I think it would have been a different story for both teams if there was fans, to be honest. You know. Well, I think that's, it's, it's maybe a bit disrespectful to Rangers to say that. I think initially it helped them. I think because Tavernier had come out before and said that sometimes the pressure at Ibrox is too much for them. Yeah. Like obviously the previous season. Yeah. But once they started the way they did, I think it was they missed them just as much as, as Celtic would have because, you know, Ibrox when Rangers are doing well and everything, Ibrox is absolutely bouncing. You know, I've, I've mm-hmm. played in it. I can testify to that. I've played against Aye. it. Um, and similarly, I think no fans hindered Celtic at the start. But then the longer it went on, they were probably lucky that there was no fans in there because it, it you know, it well, wouldn't have been a very uh, hospitable atmosphere. I know, what I know what you're saying there, but if that would have maybe forced the 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 board's hand a wee bit quicker if the fans had been in the stadium. Well, do you mean you'd have got a, you'd have got a manager in like ninety days after you sacked man and still be on four? <laughs> with a, with a, maybe I got a manager in run about the. I don't know, the second of June or Aye. something like that. Cool, <laughs> sto- cool story, mate. Anyway, Richard, right? Yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got no sympathy for Celtic whatsoever. But because you lot went to fucking Dubai, we ain't, our league get cancelled for another couple of months. <laughs> well, listen, see if your league kidney get cancelled, you wouldn't have fucking won it, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. That, that, well, valid points on both, both sides. Yeah, valid points. But guys, just break it up. Eh? Let's keep it nice. Know what I mean? Sorry, Richard. Sorry. <laughs> Hands across America. <laughs> anyway, Richard, on to other matters now. Scotland v Czech Republic. 20 odd years, we've not been at a tournament. We get there, we play Czech Republic in the first game. What do you make it? Um, I don't think they played well. I think, I'd, and I just, I don't know. I think when I've watched the, 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 the games leading up to it, apart from the, the Holland game, we just, we can be quite passive for long spells in the game. And then I think when you play a team like the Czech Republic, with all respect, Yes, they're ranking. I think they're slightly higher than us. But it's not a team you look at and go, oh, my God, they're brilliant. And any time we did actually put them under pressure, you know, we did create kind of... Um, and Robertson has a great chance. Dykes has a great chance. And we created other half chances. And everybody goes, oh, but what if, what if... Well, what if the Czechs scored all their chances? Did it beat us 7-4? So... Right, right, right. This is we'll exactly what I said well. the other night, mate. I said this the other night, exactly what you're saying. And I just, but I just think that's like... Scotland in the past, I know that you can't go gung-ho, especially against teams like England and Croatia that we're going to face, but that one against the Czechs where you pretty much need to win that, just just go after them a wee bit and see how they, re- they respond. Whereas I just I think we, the first half was just both teams kind of feeling each other out and then the second half they just kind of went, well, actually, we can score here. And they did. Um, and I Aye. just, sometimes I think that we set up and we're a bit too passive. Mate, I totally agree. I mean, you look at Wales, they had a go the other night, Wales, right? Uh, even England, who didn't play that well in the first game, he's still getting chances to young boys like Phillips, the young midfielder for Leeds and stuff. I believe our, a lot of our strongest players were on the bench in the first game, and I just think, I just don't know if Steve Clark had the guts to go with a lot of the pressure that's coming for the fans, the players that he wanted to play. But when you're looking at it, Richard, who would you have, what changes would you have made to that team? I would have. I. I mean, I. I really like Patterson. I really like Nathan Patterson. Um, the games I've seen him. I've seen him in an old farm game, which I know is a difficult, difficult environment. Yes, granted, there's no fans, but you're playing against a good team, and he. Th- I thought he was one of the best players in the park. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just. He doesn't seem like a guy. I don't. I mean, I don't know him, but he doesn't seem like someone who would be phased by playing in the Euros. 
Um, so I would have I would have played him, and I know that's slightly would have been slightly unfair to O'Donnell because he's kind of played there for the most part. But my big thing is Patterson. He hasn't played a lot of games. He doesn't have a lot of experience. But he's when the games he's played, he's played in a Rangers team um, who are top of the league, challenging for titles, playing in Europe. And instead, we played a guy who has had an okay season at a really struggling Motherwell team. So mm-hmm. I'm a big advocate of play the guys who are playing well now. Play, mm-hmm. play the players who totally agree with you. Totally are in better you. form. And, you know, and is experience... Well, how do you get experience? Well, you get a chance to play. And if you're good enough, you're old enough. I mean, I can't remember who it was that said that, but there's no Aye. true statement in football. I mean, um, you're talking about a boy who, for, during the season there, he came in to replace probably, arguably, the best player in the league last season before he got his injury, Tav. So Nathan Patterson came in, especially the pressure he was under after the whole infamous COVID thing. And he comes in and scores a goal in Europe. Do you know what I mean? Not just that, Stephen. He's come in and you've no missed Tavernier. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. You know, that's what I mean. So you've you've, you've not missed him at all. For to find a replacement for somebody that, like you said, is probably the most influential player in any team in the league. Mm -hmm. And then bring in this young boy with very little experience and for him to completely replace him without missing a missing a step, it's incredible. So I don't know, and I'm I agree with you as well, Richard. See the whole there's I don't think there's any room for sentiment when no. it comes to these tournaments, right? For me, Patterson should have been playing, regardless of how O'Donnell played in the qualifiers. International football, you should be it should be judged on form. End of story. Aye. And it's it, that's where Scotland have fell down. And to a certain extent, that's where England have fell down in the past. You know what I mean? But Scotland, this is this is our time where we should be really having a go at it, I think. I, I agree. And I think the Billy Gilmore one's slightly, slightly different for me because I've not seen much of him play. I mean, the games he has played, I think he played against Liverpool and he was excellent. Um, and he's been kind of in and out and obviously not a regular starter for Chelsea. But you're still, you know, if you, if you can go on the pitch and play against Liverpool and be one of the best players on the pitch against the midfielders that they had, you can play against the Czechs in Euro, in Euro uh, yeah. 2020, is Of course. It? Of course. Um, I, 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 I'm... These youngsters as well, Parson, Gilmore, even Turnbull to an extent, these players, they're quite fearless as well because they're young. I think they, mm-hmm. they just give the team a lift, but these players, the substitutions, Clark made, they didn't even they didn't even come onto the pitch. Do you know what I mean? It, the, it blows the my mind. The substitutions, I found, were str- strange. He made two at once, and I can't remember who came on, but it, for all the world, I think Ryan Fraser came on, and maybe, uh, I think he was after. Who did he put on? Adams. No, um, he put on... He, Anyway, Alan McGregor. You know, I looked at it and thought, that's perfect. You've taken off Jack Henry, so go to a back four with Donald and uh, Robertson fullbacks. You've got your three in midfield and play three up top. Shea Adams, Dykes, and I think it would have been Fraser at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he kept the same formation and just put McTominay back into defence. And I thought, well, that's no worked up to this point. Mm-hmm. Yes, we've mm-hmm. kind of created half chances, but we're now 2 0 down and something drastic needs to happen. So you know, put on your attacking players, change your formation to, and I mean, let's be honest, 4-3-3 is a more attacking formation than 3-5-2 because for 3-5-2 to be attacking, you need to control the midfield, which we never done. We never, we never done. Aye, but anyway, how many are we taking off England tomorrow night? 15. <laughs> I'll, take one. I'll take Aye. one and none against. Aye. 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 I know, I know. I think it's, it's, a, it's almost a perfect game for Scotland now because we are at our best when it's shit or bust, aren't we? You know what I mean? It's like, mm. backs up against the wall, Right, we've got to go for it. And and again, you know, you're, he's not going to go in there and play some expansive formation because, you know, if you don't give England any respect, then you will get you'll get spanked 5 now. But Aye. I just think that they'll have that extra, you know, because it, it seemed like they had a lack of appetite almost for the first game. Maybe the occasion goes a bit much with them. Kind of nerves got... But I don't think they'll have that now. Um, and I think if you have, a, you know, 10, 11 players on the pitch that are kind of just so desperate to win and do well and, and score goals. And I think we could give England... Ugh, we're not going to dominate England uh, with possession, but, you know, I think we can give them a scare if we, if we go about it the right way. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, it's it's one I'm looking forward to. Have a few beers, but... I don't know. Fingers crossed. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um... But anyway, Richard, enough of that. On to yourself, mate. Right? On to your career, mate. That's enough of the Euros, man. You're an Elgin boy, aren't you? 
I certainly am, yes. So who did you support growing up? I supported your mob growing up. Aye. Aye. Yeah, there go. Um, there go. Aye, just up until I was 16 and then signed for Aberdeen. And then once once you signed, I signed. So I'm, I'm not, you know, I know plenty of guys who still play football and still support mm-hmm. um, different teams. But once I signed for Aberdeen, I was very much an Aberdeen fan because it was essentially in my best interest. Um, aye, aye. And, and when I say fan, I, you know, I'm, I, just because they were my employer, basically, you kind of realise that, well, there's no point me supporting Rangers or Celtic because they're like rivals. Um, aye, of course. Aye. Especially so, Rangers. So, so I, just, I found it from kind of my teenage years, I would have been a Rangers fan and it worked out quite well because it was me and my two pals and I was Rangers, one was Celtic and one was Aberdeen. So um, there's a good bit of rivalry there. But yeah, so, so Rangers as a youngster, but then fell away from it as soon as I started playing. Well, that's kind of Aberdeen Rangers, man. You don't really want to go up to Aberdeen and say you're a Rangers fan, do you? No, you don't. Um, what you also don't want to do is go and loan from Aberdeen to Rangers. Uh, <laughs> probably not the best ideal. No, that brings you a few um, a few problems. <laughs> so, when you were at Aberdeen, was Archie Knox there? He was there when I came back from my loan spell. Right, okay. So, were you... Like we've got a famous story in this podcast, haven't we, boys? We actually yeah, not Aberdeen. Uh, who was it? We had one that was telling the story. Mark Reynolds. Mark Reynolds. Mark Reynolds. There was a story. Archie Knox was getting around everybody in the dressing room, and they were either spunk or shite bag. <laughs> were you there, Richard? I was the, unfortunately, I wasn't there. No. For that. <laughs> oh man, because Mark Reynolds told That's, the story. That sounds like a shite bag to me. <laughs> 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 well, if, if you check, check your records I never played with Mark Reynolds so <laughs> there we go I didn't well, think actually, that actually um, like he, we were at Tyne Castle one of the games and we're getting beat at half time we're getting beat 1 or 2 now. and the whole the away dressing room at Tyne Castle used to be tiny so it was it was really really small and there's like a like a physio bed in the middle and we came in at half, half time and he's like oh, where the fuck were you at the second goal and I've argued back with him and he's like <laughs> as if he's went to go for me and I'm thinking to myself, this guy is in his seventies. Like, <laughs> he's a way to go for me over this. So I was like, I was like, well, I'm not going to back down. So then obviously I kind of, but then it was just like the bed that separated us, and it was always like the two of us realised that we can't really be rolling about the floor here because, especially you know, for me, because I'm thinking this, this guy, he's an old guy. I could. Do it up. <laughs> I, if I get battered off him, I'm never hearing the end yet. <laughs> <laughs> also in my mind, I. <laughs> <laughs> he was, um, you know, I would imagine, to be fair, even then, he would have probably given me a good go right enough. <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, it was just so funny. I was just so shocked by, like, the fact that he was, that just, you know, when you see someone and they take that step and you think, oh, okay, right, right. this could be on here. <laughs> but no, other than that, I got on I got on really well, actually. Aye, yeah, yeah, so that was what I was going to say. What is it like to play under him and Craig Brown? Well, it must have been a decent laugh, at least. It was brilliant. They, they, Craig Brown made me captain. Um, so we went back pre-season. I was captain for six months. I was there, and so we'd go in and after games, and the, you know we'd have arguments. Too, but so you'd argue Archie, and you'd be shouting and balling back and forth. And, and Craig tended to be the quieter one, and the kind of you know the pacifier most of the time. Right. But then you'd walk at the office, and Archie would be like, "Are oh, you getting any plans at the weekend? What are you up to?" <laughs> I, but I just I just loved the fact that it was like we'll argue about football. But then as soon as we're finished, it's done. I don't hold judges. He doesn't. He doesn't dislike me because I question him. I don't dislike him because he shouted at me. And it's just and that for me is just brilliant. Just the way to manage players that you know we're both passionate about what we're doing, but it's you know on the training pitch, on the pitch, Aye. things are said and done. But you don't mean it's not you know. Aye. And then you come off and you, you can just chat normal. And I've since I, I met him on a night out one time. He was just he was in the West End. He was at. Uh, Ashton Lane and we walked into a pub and he was there and I was chatting away to him and he was he was brand new so he's, he's like he's one of those kind of old school obviously old school coaches managers that they'll shout and scream at you but they don't hold grudges and that's Aye. me that's what, the way you need to be that's the best way I mean you don't I mean it's like at the end of the day you're still human beings do you know what I mean so you don't want to hold grudges about if you've maybe had an opinion about tactics or something to have a thought. There's no point holding grudges about that, do you know what I mean? I know, but I mean, stupid really. Why, who, why would I challenge Archie Knox about football? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's got more knowledge in one finger than I do in my whole body. But, <laughs> but um, you, played, you played under a few guys at Aberdeen, Richard, like Eb Scovedal, Jimmy Calderwood, Mark Begee. Uh, who's your favourite to work with? 
Um, pro- I mean, I had a few fallouts with Jamie Calderwood, but probably Jamie Calderwood because he was the he was there the longest. Um, mm-hmm. And I played a lot of games under him. I played a load of different positions. Um, but he, he kind of, you realised that he could trust me in different positions. So probably him, you know, and, and a few of the seasons, the season we finished third, um, really good season, we finished fourth a couple of times. Um, and we were always really fit and quick. And um, I kind of liked it as well because the training was quite structured in a way that like, you'd go back pre-season and I would build, you, you would know what you're doing the full week. And then mm-hmm. the next preseason, it would be the same. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So you kind of see when you go back and see the unknown as a football player. It's mm-hmm. awful, especially preseason. You think, oh, Jesus, what we getting a day? What we getting a day? Whereas when you knew what it was, and I kind of liked that, and his, his, a lot of his training was 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 similar. Um, but yeah, probably the most enjoyable times were, were with Jimmy Calderwood. Who was it? Jamie Langfield. I, I, had you, show. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, Jamie Langfield stacked there. No, no, I heard about it, and uh, one of my one of my other mates leave leave there. I think he was Jamie's he was Jamie's best man, and I think the start of his best man speech, he just stood up and held up the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Picture of Jamie in the front, pissed himself sitting outside this bar. I could argue with Jimmy Goldwood. <laughs> so what was obviously you said that you had a few run-ins with Jimmy. What was like Richard? You're getting a bit of reputation. You're squaring up to Archie Knox, and you're having run-ins with Jimmy Calderwood. You know what I mean? Okay. What was it like with Jimmy? Never fu- better never fucked about with Walter Smith, did you? We'll get to that, maybe later. <laughs> Not one word I said against him. <laughs> <laughs> he could still bar me. <laughs> <laughs> what about Jimmy Calderwood when you had your run-ins with him? What was that like? It was, again, it was just like I, I would say, you know, I'd react to things in training and I'd kind of tell him to fuck off and <laughs> whatever. Um, and he was the same. As soon as you went in to see him, I went, Gaffer, look, sorry. Fine, done and dusted. And I, he left me out of game because I was raging. And I, but then I thought, you know that way you think, if I go in here and say sorry, he's just going to go, that's all. He's, he's doing that just so he plays the next day. Aye, aye. So aye I was aye. like, I was kind of caught between still being raging and also going, nah, I'm not going in because it looks shit. So aye. then I went in on a Monday, played the next game. And he says, that's all. Basically, if you'd came in and seen me straight away, you'd have played. And I think he was just, basically, and he, he said to me, and it was one of the best things I've ever heard, he says, he says, sometimes what you're saying, you might be right. He says, but I'm the manager. <laughs> so so if, he, if he's saying something agree. against me, then that's on him, basically, and he's a manager. I was like, you know what? That's actually a, a really good way to think about it, that it doesn't matter what I say and how much I piss and moan, you're a gaffer, so you need to go Obviously, Aberdeen against Bayern and the Allianz Arena, what was that like, Richard? Uh, it, was, it was incredible. I mean, the stadium was, was unbelievable. The pitch was a, like, The pitch was a bowling green, which did not help us at all. Um, because they were they were awesome. Um, I think they, they hit the... I'm pretty sure either we took centre and gave them the ball straight back and they kept it for about two and a half minutes and I think Podolski hit the crossbar and we were all just looking about as if we're going, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a really, really long night. <laughs> and I think it was 5-1 to them in the end, but I think it was... I think once they'd scored their five, they were happy enough just to chill out. Which, which kind of spared our blushes a little bit, but I mean, Van Bommel was incredible. Um, Podolski, as I mentioned, Luca Tony, Lucio at the back. I mean, they had some team. Um, I think Lucio was a player, wasn't he? Oh, uh, aye. Aye. Um, so it was um, it was a great experience as a player. It's great to play in these games, but it's also an eye opener that you go, "Wow, these guys are so much better than me." Um, but it's still <laughs> still great. I, mean, I think they had Willie Samuel at right back. Um, and, oh, <laughs> Who was he? Tell us a story of it. Uh, Willie Samuel, Jamie was, Langfield, Jamie Langfield, Jamie Langfield. Says I was, I that, think, was it not that Jimmy Calderwood said that their weak link was Willie Samuel? And that's I right. Up. That's right. <laughs> yeah, just won the World Cup. <laughs> you know that. Like, oh, can be got. Aye, he's what to target him. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it was probably like when you look at their team, you think, "Oh fuck, who, who do you target?" Like there's just no, exactly. big, there's just no weak link. Um, I, I can, I, that was quite funny. Him saying that, and all of us are going, "Ah, brilliant!" Aye. Hey, no so would you say that that was a highlight of your career? Um, I don't know. I think you know last season. You know, sorry, but um, last season was is, is up <laughs> there. Well, up the, the, way, the way um the way it panned out. I think winning the league cup with Ross County was also you know because when you play at the smaller kind of in the smaller clubs, you don't expect to be getting to finals of tournaments. So I think probably winning the league cup 
closely followed by by League One. Um, but then, you know, it's difficult to put them in order because playing playing with playing for Aberdeen in Europe, I scored against FC Copenhagen in one of the games. That's right. You know, these are kind of memories that are very difficult to kind of separate from each other because they're all they're all great memories. Um, okay. Similarly, you know, going to Rangers and make my Champions League debut, it's like. It's incredible. Um, that's that's what I was going to get at, mate. Like, obviously, we're talking about Aberdeen and stuff, but what was the reaction like going to Rangers? Like, Phil, what was that like? Um, obviously, the kind of reaction, Aberdeen fans hated men, you know, got several kind of very interesting, well-thought-out tweets that, you know, Aye. one guy hoped that I got hit by a bus and then shagged by someone with AIDS. And I was oh, just left. I, I was left thinking. I hope I get hit by the bus first. Fuck me. <laughs> 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 but then, you know, it was, so they were actually they were they were very creative in the ways uh, that um, they wanted uh, my demise. But the reaction from the Rangers fans was great for the most part. They were kind of happy to go. Well, this guy's came from Aberdeen. We don't really know much about him, but we'll we'll kind of judge him based on what he does for the team. Aye. And then I came on for the first game against Hamilton and put their striker through and goal and big greasy save me. <laughs> the fans must have been thinking, what the fuck is this guy? <laughs> How send, did you? Send, send, send Agent Foster back immediately. <laughs> how, how did you find it going to Rangers, mate? So obviously, I mean, no disrespect to Aberdeen, but Rangers obviously, with the facilities Rangers go and the resources they've got, how did you find it when you got there? It was inc- like it was incredible. Obviously, Murray Park, Murray Park. Well, was it Hummel Arena? It's called now or something. Ocken Howie. Ocken Howie is it? Okay. Right. Um, aye. So it's it's impressive enough. But then you remember that, like I say, going through my teams, going through my teens, I was looking up at Alan McCoy, Ian mm-hmm. Durant, you know. And then it's all of a sudden I'm walking in, and these are the guys that I'm now kind of speaking to, and they're taking my training and chatting with. So and, and Walter Smith as well, and so it was kind of. It was quite surreal for for the most part, um, but then you kind of you settle in and you realise that they're just the same. But the one thing I probably never realised as much is how hard the Rangers players worked. You know, mm. on the pitch, in the gym, because you always you always expect the Rangers and Celtic players to be better players, technically better players. But the, these guys were better players, but they were physically stronger, they were quicker, they were sharper, um, understood the game better. And just that was a kind of an eye opener, and, and I do believe that it brought my game on playing with these guys, playing with Stephen Davis and Lee McCulloch and Kenny Miller and Nick, Nikita Jelovic. You know, these guys who are just they've got more talent than I had, but they've also, you know, they, they, they couple that with hard work mm-hmm. um, and, a, and a great attitude. Um, and obviously, then you're working with Walter Smith, who's, you know, Unfortunately for him, probably the second best ever Scottish manager because Sir Alex was was so good. But Aye. obviously Walter worked with him. But yeah, so it was it was very surreal to start with. But they quickly, I think Walter was great, especially with me, it not making it a big thing like it, mm. the the Champions League. So I knew that Kirk, I think Kirk Broadfoot was injured. So we're walking in for training the day before the game, and the gaffer just walked pulls me. He's like, "Foz, come here." Puts his arm around me to go. Um, so, do you, um, do you fancy playing tomorrow? And I was like, aye. He went, all right. And that was it. I can remember, <laughs> I phoned my dad and I was like, I think I'm playing tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure, but I think I'm playing. Is um, that the Champions League? It's the Champions League, it's aye. against Valencia. Right. And I think, he, I think he just thought that if he obviously doesn't make it a big thing that I'm playing, then... It'll allow me not to get as nervous as I probably would. I'll try control. and keep you more relaxed as I pull the gun. Your ass would have been making buttons the second they said that. Aye, well, well, uh, it was. Anyway. But, um, but he was. I think he was just very good. He was very good with people. He, he knew. He knew which people he had to kind of shout at, which people he had to put an arm around, which people he needed to talk to. Um, and his man management was excellent. I mean, it was just I can always remember that, and it was just. I think he was just brilliant at. You know, just like I say, kind of, we had actually quite a small squad, and he just he kept everything moving and everybody going Aye. all the time, and it was just it was a great it was a great environment to play in, and obviously winning the league at the end of the season, and, and that was just a fantastic kind of um, experience to be to be a part of. But I nearly, to be fair, I'm sorry to keep chatting on, but a few weeks before, Aww. I nearly crashed my motor 
So we're driving the we're driving on the road and Celtic got away to Inverness. Right. So I'm driving along and the commentator, and I think obviously Inverness are I think they're winning at this point or the the drawn, whatever. And then Paddy McCourt gets the ball. And I think it's a, when Lennon kicks a bottle, because it's like in Paddy McCourt gets a ball and he goes past one, he goes past two, he goes into the box, he goes down, and it is not a penalty. And I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's no penalty. You just expect it to be penalty to say, look, they score a goal, they won the game. But it was just, honestly, I could, it was the, it was the Auckland Kilns. It was like 40 mile an hour speed limit. So I'm driving there. And if I had it been 70 mile an hour, I think I'd have came off the road. So just, just <laughs> like, and he built me up, and I was like, "Oh, you fuck!" Oh, I got that. But no, that was that was brilliant because then we knew from that moment on if we win the rest of the games, we win the league, which obviously Aye. is what we did. So, um, but no, that was I can remember driving up the road at that moment, but absolutely buzzing, <laughs> but adrenaline through the roof because I nearly crashed. Like, mate, I remember you're saying it was quite a small squad we had, and I remember at the time we signed Jerovic, and I remember thinking we kind of put all our eggs in the one basket there. With Yerovich and a lot of people I remember saying we need to strengthen here, we need to strengthen there. But obviously bringing Yerovich in, he was quality. But obviously, what was he like when you seen him firsthand? How good was he in training and on the pitch? He was. He's, he's one of those players that when the ball went to him, everything seemed to slow down. Mm-hmm. Like he just had seemed to have time. He could. His first touch was incredible. He always knew where the goal was. Um, he he could always kind of manipulate his body to get a shot on target. Um, mm-hmm. I think you see with the, the goal in the League Cup final that he scores, he's kind of yeah. fallen over, but he still manages to get the ball on target. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I say, he was just one of those guys that you look at and you think, why does he always have time in the ball? Like, he never seems to be under any pressure. Yeah. And then I think his goal, what summed him up the most was his goal away to Aberdeen, to Audrey. Oh, oh the overhead kick, mate. Oh. You know what I mean? It's oh. kind of a horrible game. Aberdeen had done well. You know, <laughs> Couldn't have break them down, and then all of a sudden, out of nothing, you just you ball pops up and that overhead kick and, and win the game. And that's you know that's that kind of summed up how good Aye. he was in the moments that he need him. He came up with the magic. Yeah, oh, he, did, he scored did a free you? kick against Hamilton as well. We won two one. Mm-hmm. Um, right. You know, like big moments where you need your big players, and, and he certainly stepped up. Class. Total I, track, was, track. He's no, trying to crack I'm, a joke. No, I'm, here trying to, I'm trying to find out here. How, how do you react? You're on. You're on loan to Rangers for Aberdeen, right? Hmm. And he's put that overhead kick into the top corner. What's your reaction? Do you cheer or do you? What, what do you do? How do you, how do you react I, to that? Cheer! I really came out the the box through the glass. I was <laughs> <laughs> of course, Stone Richards going to cheer. Jesus! <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I told you. As soon as I changed team, my allegiance changed. <laughs> I mean, so, you're only on loan, your chance. <laughs> I, I still want the league with him, so I'm buzzing. Uh, exactly. So, okay, come on. I mean, he won the league with Rangers, man. Right. I, it must have, must have been some honour being part of the last ever Rangers team to win the league right enough. <laughs> Sorry about him, Richard. Anyway, mate. <laughs> oh, you're all, mate. Oh, Jesus. Stephen, Christ. it's called Football Daft, not yes, fucking Football I know. Focus, all right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but looking back, what was the highlight of your time at Rangers, mate? Um, prob- probably the, the the Champions League debut. Um, because I've played played three games Champions League and then played in the, the Europa League. But I think just just that atmosphere at Ibrox, um, kind of standing there, get your photo taken before the game. Champions League music comes on, a wee bit of shite falls out your arse. <laughs> <laughs> the photo, the photo of me. The photo, the team photo, and everybody's kind of stood in. I'm up. It's made the mind. I went from so I was I was at Aberdeen, but obviously before, but I wasn't playing because I'd been suspended from the season before, so wasn't in the team. And I went within the space of two weeks. I was playing Cove Rangers in the Aberdeenshire Cup, and two weeks later, I was on the bench at Old Trafford. Aye, you, and then, you know, a week, two weeks after that, I was starting against Valencia, and I'm thinking to myself, "This, if Carlsberg done loan moves, this is it." Aye, this is it. Without, you're, you're just, without a doubt, this doesn't happen. It must have, it's what you're saying there. See, when you hear that Champions League music, that's when it kicks in, isn't it? You, Aye, that's, obviously, that's, it fans in the stand, but for a player, it must be a different kettle of fish altogether when you hear that. Especially when you've never experienced it, and you've, and like I said, the the, the 
atmosphere at Ibrox that night was incredible. Like probably one of the best atmospheres I've ever played in. Um, and it was just, you know, I was playing against Juan Mata kind of directly. Um, and my mates were like, oh, he, he, I think he'd done, it, some, he'd some, done some outrageous bit of skill when he was away with Spain. Um, and thankfully I hadn't seen it till after the game, but um, I don't know why my mates were wanting to tell me how good he was before. before <laughs> but, um, no, it was just, it was just special, special night. And um, the best bit was we stayed at the Mar Hall um, mm-hmm. the night before the game. So I've we've played the game. I've then went back to the house. I was like, fuck, I'm going to house keys. I left my house keys at Mar Hall. I stayed that night in the Premier Inn. <laughs> like, like, um, my ex-wife at the time, she was up the road to the wee one and I basically came home and stayed at the Premier Inn in uh, Mogai. The one that sits behind the Barnbury Hotel on the night I made my Champions League debut. <laughs> what a fall from grace that was. <laughs> Reality check, mate. Reality yeah. check. So we mentioned there that obviously you won the League with Angels, right? You won the league last year with Park or last season with Park Thistle. What one's better? I think because I, I was not more involved because you're all obviously as a squad member, you're all, you are involved, but I think just the way it kind of transpired, probably just Partick Thistle, I think. Um That's you, a wrong answer, Richard. That's a wrong I, answer. I know, I know. Especially for Big John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think just because like I say, the, the Rangers won. I was, I, knew, I knew at the time I was very much a squad player, um, and so that last six games, I think it was five or six, five last five games we had to win. I never played. I never mm-hmm. played a minute in any of those games. Um, whereas with the Partick being on the pitch, you know, when we, when we beat Falkirk and we knew, um, and it's like you get that kind of, you just get an app. It's just a, such a buzz when you're on the pitch, and we scored the third goal, and you're always thinking, right, I need one more but then when, once the fourth one goes in just after half time you're thinking right that's it done but that's just won the league um, so I think just because I was more involved certainly towards the latter stage probably the, the league one uh, title All through that speech there Richard I'm looking at John and I've just got hello darkness my old friend playing and just the camera <laughs> zooming in on John you're like ah and we go to the third goal and then when we go to the fourth goal we you <laughs> I can't even John's just sitting like that. The hang out, the hang out. Steve AC thought was one. He was, was doing it. John would do a video and put it on his Twitter. He's not oh, doing it for him. I know, I know. I know. And just remember that. <laughs> oh, right, so, on. Richard, you nearly had a square goal with Archie and Oxford, a wee ding dong with Jimmy Calderwood. No near misses with Walter Smith, no. None. No. no. no um, he was, he was, he's the kind of guy who walks in the room and everybody just stops what they're doing and takes notice. Aye. Um, like when the teacher walks in when you were away in at school. He's um but he was he was so good, like he was so good with the boys. He came in, and I've told this story before, but it's it, I find it so funny that he came in, we would go on the bikes before training. So he came in and he's fucking raging. Like he, that way you kind of burst in the door and you're thinking, oh shit, somebody's getting it here. <laughs> he's like to McGregor and James B. You two fucking get into Corinthian. Uh were you in Corinthian at three o'clock in the morning on Saturday? They were like, no, no. Oh, no, sorry. I, we, no, <laughs> that was it. He says, we used to chuck to it, Corinthian, at three o'clock in the morning. And the two of them were like, no, no, we're not chucked to it. So then he goes, he storms off again. Then we go back into the dress room. And usually we just walk out on straight onto the training pitch, but no, we've got a meeting. So the, the I don't know if you know, but the, the dress room, and it's like an oval shape. Mm-hmm. You stand up the far end of it. And Ian Durant stood, beside, stood behind him. Um, and he's like, look, guys, we've got a small squad. I don't, I don't, you know, I'd, I'd run a very relaxed ship here. I don't expect you, you know, to kind of be like saints. But he says, but I do expect that when we've got a game midweek, you don't go out on a Saturday night. Um, he says, but I must apologise to to Grigsy and Beats. He says, you didn't get chucked out of Corinthian at three o'clock. You were just fucking getting into Corinthian at three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> And honestly, like Ian Durant stood behind him like that, just like shaking, like silently laughing because obviously he knew that if, if he started laughing and Walter turned round, he'd have fucking ripped his head off. But it was just, and I looked over at Lee McCulloch, his head's down and he's the same. Just, and it was just like that way to a potential kind of, a potential Powder bad cake. thing happening. Uh, he just, he basically got his point across, but 
took the seriousness out of it. Um, and I just thought that was brilliant. But it was just funny the way he said it. And he's completely deadpan when he said it. Oh, I must apologize. <laughs> and it was just, that was just like, <laughs> so funny. Um, and, oh, aye, so that was that was him. But you, you, you know, you knew, no, I would never have, I would have never have shouted back to no, him. No. Um, just, I think it's, not that I never respected the other guys, but just it's it's Walter Smith. You know what I mean? It's like he, the career he's had, the, what he's done. Um, like I say, when he when he talks, you stand up and take notice. So Aye, uh, certain, well, certain people that command respect, and them he's definitely one of them. He, he is, However, um, one of the people that don't command respect, going by your history, is a Mister Danny Swanson. No. So what happened there? It was it was one of the most bizarre situations ever because well because. There was no footage. So basically what happened is he gives a free kick away right before uh, half time. I'm shouting at him. He's shouting back at me. And then the two of us are playing on the same side and we both need to go off. Like he needs to kind of run past me to go up the tunnel. So referee blows a halftime muscle and we're just arguing back and forth, back and forth. And I was like, I'll, I was like, I'll see you inside. So I'm running up and then he's, we're both kind of going to converge in the tunnel. And I see him just change direction and come toward me. So... I'm like, oh shit. So then I just go toward him. And then what annoys me the most is everybody's like, oh, I foster through a punch. And I'm thinking to myself, I never threw a punch. What I'd done was I put my left hand out to try and grab him so I could throw a punch with my right hand. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all like, oh, he threw a punch. I'm like, I'm not going to throw a weak punch with my left hand. I'm going to build this fella up. So I went to grab him, but I don't know how, but I've slipped. And then I've went down, I've kind of felt a thud. Um, as my head hit the floor, well, I thought my head had hit the floor. So, go in, and then I get up, and I'm still raging, and then Blair, I think Blair Olsen's got, like, he's like bear hugging me from behind, and I'm trying to get away to him to get to Danny, and we go in, and it's all calmed down, and the two of us realise that we're, we've made an arse of it, and we're sitting there, and then we apologise, but, so, but to, um, who was it sitting next to me? Uh, Tam Scobie's sitting beside me. So I went through to the referee, and the referee... By the way, the, the referee never seen it in. Aye. So he's like, but I need to send you off for violent conduct. So right, okay. So I went back through, and I'm sitting with Tam, and Swanee gets called through, and I says to Tam, I says, like, I, like Swanee will be all right, because I kind of went for him first. It's probably me that's going to get sent off, and he'll be fine. And Tam's just turned and looked at me and went, you fucking volleyed you in the heat? And I was like, oh... <laughs> Was that what it was when I fell down? Because I thought I just thought I hit my head off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like it was he clearly he clearly obviously went to do it and then thought, shit, I can't do it properly because he'd have turned my head off. So it was just like so I felt a bump and I thought I, I just thought I'd hit the ground. But no, I think it was I think it was Swanee had, had booted me. But like what do you follow do go for Father Ted man getting a wee fly kick in when you're doing it? That's brutal. <laughs> hey, uh, but like I say, it was so surreal because no footage, no video footage at all. Mate, did did your wife, did Amy McDonald, did she make a, did she have a go at him on the radio or something? No, not, not right, Danny. Tommy Harry, right. Tommy Harry and Tommy kind of fell out right. when I left. Aye, aye, aye. aye, aye. Um, and then Tommy referred to her as Mrs. Foster, which right. uh, was a bit uh, misogynistic, she felt. so. Aye. But then it's all kind of, Tommy and I got on great now, um, and we've, we've spoken a few times Um you know, in the last couple of months. And it is, like, again, we, the two of us don't hold any grudges. Amy doesn't hold Aye. any grudges. Um, but Amy's, you know, Amy's... I bet she was pissing herself when Kelly got relegated, but... <laughs> no, no, <that's laughs> <good. laughs> not at all, not at all. Um, but she's, she's obviously, what she does, she gets, you know, she can get some abuse and stuff as well. And, and people, tell, and she does, it's water off a duck's back and she doesn't bother. But see, when someone says something about the people she love or the people that's in the kind of a hard close group of course mate of course. she's like a, a spitting viper honestly she just comes out and but that's know. the way to be mate that's the best way if it's somebody that you love getting abuse you're going to stand up for them no matter what oh, do you know what I mean? aye and I think you know I would be exactly the same the abuse I get especially now that I'm a bit older I don't care ah, um, but if anyone kind of was to say anything about her it, it does it does anger me uh, somewhat so yeah that was all that was um, but it was a a strange, strange situation that you know it's a good story to tell. Like, I, yeah, I Aye. told my son, ah, your dad got sent off for fighting one of his teammates. So, <laughs> <laughs> how, example how, of that, how, old your, how old's your boy? He's 10 now, he's 10 now. He was only, he must have only been about six at the time. Right, but uh, mate, let me ask you this, man. 
Does Amy let you drive any of fast motors? Aye. Aye. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, after I, I hope you don't listen to fucking. The I was going to say, I don't want to see any sport lines, mate, with anything. <laughs> no, she's, um, she's, uh, she, she's uh, a tad more nervous in the car than I am. Um, Aye. You know, when I'm sitting in the car, and to be fair, she's got the Lamborghini Urus um, and the 458 Speciale Ferrari. <laughs> There's a lot of power there, and I like the anyway, the old, the old music game. You need to get into the music game, don't Aye. you? I know, I know. God, man. We could, we could get great on, we could just be a we could be like the new Westlife. Aye, Bagsy Louie Walsh, the new Scottish band, Nay Direction. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, mate, you've just you've signed a new deal at Thistle. Uh, is this going to be your last season or what? Well, I think it's just it depends how the body copes. Um, I said that last season, and, and last season was really tough. Like I say, it was, I think it was about nine months from the last time I played um, a game to going back in, like kind of pre-season training, if you will. Yeah, and That was really tough in the body because it started to kind of not shut down, but just kind of get used to not doing anything. Because I was doing running on my own, but see, unless you train, you don't have that intensity and you can't get it. Um, so last year initially was really tough and I thought you know what this will be my last year win league one try and get up kind of that's that's really what I'm hoping for but then the, the, the longer the season went on the stronger I felt I mean yeah. we were playing we played Saturday Tuesday Thursday and in both Thursday games um, I felt great and it was like my third game in, in you know six days or whatever it was Aye. Um, so in uh, this season going back I feel really good a few days in obviously I've got the usual aches and pains and kind of tired legs at night but um, the manager's quite good because he you know we, we, he set the boys up to do the running today and I done I done kind of most of the running but then he he left me out for the last few so he appreciates that I'm a bit older and obviously need more time to recover than that but um, so, but I just it's basically until the body says no or until somebody right. stops paying me to play what about this one then right so Patrick Thistle well, all over the internet recently, <laughs> right? With a with a viral video when Tiffany signed, uh, right? Could they not have done something for you when you signed your new deal? Because you know I get your missies to do oh, Mr. Rock and Roll or something like that. Right? <laughs> My name doesn't fit with any good songs. I mean, Scott Tiffany fits really, really well with uh, uh, breakfast, breakfast at Tiffany's. I suppose. I mean, I'm, that's, I'm, that's my job for this week. I need to come up with a Richard Foster song. Right. <laughs> the Aberdeen fans used to sing, What's that coming over the hill? It's Richard Foster. Well, there you go. <laughs> there we go. There there we go. go. Aye. But that was before I left to go to Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> There's that bastard coming back over the hill again. <laughs> so, Richard, the legs go, I'll need to pay you to play anymore. When it's done, what is it? Is it management or media? Because you're in, obviously, I see you. On like sports scene and stuff, knowing you're popping up in different things before matches and stuff. Is it media or management? Um, I would like to go into coaching. Um, mm. I've done all my badges. I've got my A license, um, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm assistant manager of the Thistle Ladies team at the moment. Um, and mean? then once their season finishes in July, I'm gonna um, kind of change over and start doing a bit of coaching. I think it's under like 16, 17s at Thistle. Excellent. Um, so I do, I, I do want to go down that road, but I, at the same time, I do enjoy the media stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Enjoy kind of basically because football is much easier when you're just watching other people play it. So, aye, aye, aye. aye. Um, we know. Weird, <laughs> weird that, me and Tom made a career out of that. <laughs> I've made a bit. I've um, I've become a better player the more I watch other people play. <laughs> no, that's, it's, by the way, you do you do come across well. I will say that you do. Oh, come across well, I appreciate well, that, and I, I do like. I like to go in there and I try and be, you know, you know, if Celtic play well, I'll say Celtic play well. If Rangers play well, I'll say Rangers play well. Um, if Celtic play well, you say Celtic play well. If Rangers play well, you're like, you fucking see that, boys? But no, I try and be, I try and be kind of impartial and I try and be honest. And I, I, <coughs> I see a lot of guys go in there and have like notes and lists of notes. And I think, well, I, I, I'm not there to give you stats. I think because that's not. You're the, I'm there as a f- current football player to give my opinion. So, if you ask me a question now, I'm going to give you my opinion as of now. Yeah. So and I, so I don't. You know, some people need the notes. I, I prefer not to have them because I think it would just kind of, it would make it a bit more stunted. So, I, like I say, I just try and be honest. And um, I, I've, I've had, I've, 
nearly every time I go on sports scene and I come off and I look at Twitter and there's like a Sun Sport or a Daily Record story about something that I've said in sports scene. I mean, the, the, the most recent one was the, the Dundee United goalie. <laughs> uh, yeah, before I, I don't know if you heard that before the game I was doing it and we heard that Seagrass pulled out the game so that was fine so other guys coming in and then we've seen the video footage of it and he's, he's kind of look, he's pointing at a wee bit in his wrist and as if he's going oh it's, it's a wee bit sore so I've just went I tell you what he better be injured he better have broken that wrist because mm. he's pulled out the game the cup game there better be something serious wrong with him which is the exact attitude I would have had if I was playing yeah. besides but clearly, I'm no, I'm no wishing that he broke his wrist. <laughs> but to the point that I, I did, I, I do believe I said he better leave in a cast. But it was said with a smile on my face. Um, but then the Dundee United media team, they were wanting to know what I said. I then had to like kind of apologise for what I said. Oh, but anybody with any common sense knows what you mean from a football perspective there. Listen, like, see in social media, there's no fucking common sense. No, we know well, that's, that. that's part of the problem. So, yes, yeah, so they um, then... Um, aye, so they ran with it, and then uh, Mickey Mellon was getting asked about it for weeks afterwards, and mm-hmm. everybody's going to go, and oh, Richard Foster wishes injuries on his fellow professionals. And I think, guys, this has been taken far too much out of context, but... Like I say, at that moment, that's what. If I was been in the dressing room beside him, I'd have said that to him. I said, I'll "You bet, better, I'll bet you you better be injured." United, by the way, exactly. I bet you even the United players were saying the exact same. Exactly, totally, man. Because it ruins. Well, maybe, it ruins maybe they never said it on the telly right enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Richard, it's been great talking to you. But every week. On Football Daft, we put our guest Scottish Football Knowledge to the test with our 90 second quiz. Okay. Up for it? Right. I'm We've up got a leaderboard here. <laughs> David Martindale's top of the leaderboard with a score of 16 in joint 16, second. 90 jo- seconds. Aye, man. Uh-huh. Aye. Did he have a trivia set inside him? He did, actually. <laughs> he did. He had a guy sitting next to him helping him with the answers. <laughs> In second is John Sutton, Chick Young and Hamilton Scott Martin. They're all on 15. Mark Wilson and Keith Lasley are third with 14. Other selected scores include Jamie Langfield on 12, Kyle Hutton on 7, Lee Miller on 6. Kyle Hutton on 7? He's on 7. <laughs> <laughs> can't even and <laughs> Barry from EastEnders <laughs> is on 4. <laughs> <laughs> At the bottom is a tie between... Peter Lovengrans, Derek Johnston, Craig Levine, and Mick Supatalain, and they're all on three. Oh, dear. Okay. Right. So is there this anybody is, you want is, to beat? This is one league that I, I'm just hoping for mid-table in. <laughs> but I'm going to let Chris answer, ask you the questions, because my boy is trying to run out the front door two seconds, right? I'm going to get some, some ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go, aye. Right, John, have we got 90 seconds on the clock? We have indeed. Richard, your 90 seconds start now. Who was Rangers' oldest goal scorer this season? Jermaine Defoe. Which member of the current Scotland squad has the most caps? David Marshall. Which English side did Lee Griffiths play for? Pass. Can't pass, quite he's an answer. Carlisle. Which group are France and Germany in? D. Who's the only Glasgow-based team Dick Campbell has managed? You should Hard know this. Football. You should know, yeah. Right. <laughs> Which team did you make your European debut against for Aberdeen? Dnipro. Which town are East Fife based in? Methyl. Which stadium has a higher capacity, Easter Road or Tynecastle? Easter Road. Where are the current Scottish Challenge Cup holders? Name many Scottish Premier League with a lion on their club, club crest. Aloha. Which former Celtic defender has been linked with a move back to the club this week? Virgil van Dijk. How many career goals have you scored? Ten. What colour appears alongside white and blue on the Scotland home kit sleeves? Yellow. In what season did you make your professional debut for Aberdeen? 2002, 2003. MLS Club Real. Time. MLS Club, question. MLS Club Real Salt Lake play in which American state? Oh, it's Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh. 
He's going to give away the answer there. I bet I'm not going to give away the can make a difference. Let's tout up the score. I can't believe we're linked back with Virgil van Dijk, man. Are you? Okay, uh, Richard, I'll go through uh, your wrong answers. Uh, member of the current Scotland squad has the most caps. It's not David Marshall, Craig Gordon, so you were on the right, right lines there. Uh, Lee Griff has played for Wolves. Um, France and Germany are in Group F. Uh, current Scottish Challenge Cup holders, one of your former teams, Ross County. Um, you're clearly not a badge kisser, uh, Richard. Um, a, a, a team with a lion on their club crest you could have Dundee United, you could have had Livingston, or you could have, of course, had Rangers as well. So, oh, sure. so uh, and uh, former Celtic defender, like with the move back, it's Eric Shevich. I can't even pronounce it. Shevchenko. Shevchenko. And uh, the colour on Scotland's sleeve is not yellow, it is red. However, however, you have beaten Kyle Hutton. Right, you've not beaten Jamie Langfield. You're on eight. Eight, that's good. That's Mid table, bad. told you. I just, I went away to get my boy a tangerine and I came back, I didn't realise you said badge kisser, I thought you said, you're, I thought you said you're clearly not a bad kisser, I was like, what the hell have you been doing? <laughs> well, hey, don't knock it till you tried it. Hey, there you go, mate, there you go. But that's a decent score, my man, that's a decent score. Well done. Superb. Yeah, I think yeah, it was Scotland, yeah. sure. It's got white, uh, blue, then white, then red on it. Oh, is it? On the sleeve, I remember. You can clearly see I've never worn one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Richard, it's been great talking to you, and honestly, thanks so much for giving up your time and coming oh, on. We really appreciate, appreciate it. Mate. Having me on, guys. Brilliant, mate. mate All the best for next season, mate. Good luck. Yep. Thank you. See you later. Thanks. See you. Cheers, Richard. Bye bye. That today was one of my favourite interviews I've ever done on Ooh, the Bold Daft. Wow, wow. Oh, I, I'd agree with that. I think uh, the Bold Richard was... You know, I, I didn't I did take him as an absolute wrecking machine. He's a no. bit of a wrecking machine, Aye. isn't he? Mm-hmm. He, mm-hmm. Likes to, he likes to fling his hat in the ring. See, there's a square go happening. He's not far, far away. I know, he's not far away. <laughs> I mean, you go through it, when you look at it, Archie Knox... Danny Swanson, Jimmy Calderwood, Jimmy Calderwood, Tommy Wright. Aye. No shy, Ooh. is he? No, and I had him doing as this kind of quiet guy. Classic, so a classic Aye. gentleman. Aye. Aye, but I think we've all learned today, you don't fuck with Richard. You don't fuck with Richard <laughs> Foster, that's no, right. You don't fuck with Richard Foster. And see if you do, Amy's no fucking far behind it either. You've got, fucking, you've got a thing in your hands with the two of them. And by the that way, they'll, not, they'll not be far catching you either with their fucking motors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, but it was an absolute diamond, that guy. I really enjoyed it. And we're just, guys, we're just making memories every week, man. And Gredo's yeah. not here. I know. Oh, I know. Well, this is goes out just before the Scotland game. You're maybe listening to after the Scotland game. So. I, I've got to ask you boys bef- before we go and if you are you know make a bold prediction what's the score going to be tomorrow night I'm going to back my son up and I'm going to say 2-1 to Scotland Stephen can I let's film it you guys would be a failure. <laughs> you guys would be a failure on the radio. This is, the, this is one of the unwritten rules of radio. I, I, tell what, you what, I tell you what John what do you think is going to happen? I think I'm going for a 1-1. I'm going for a 1-1, then a win against Croatia next Tuesday. My head is saying we're going to get beat tomorrow night. My heart is saying we're going to pull something out of the hat. But if he doesn't play our good players, what fucking chance have we got? Yeah, you know I mean? This is it. You know, he's got to pick your right team. And... It doesn't matter. If, if we don't get anything tomorrow... It's a deep rubber against Croatia. Because yeah. I'm not going to finish as one of the best after losing two games, right? So, it's a deep rubber. This is make or break for Steve Clark, in my opinion. Yeah. Aye, I'd, I'd agree with you there. I think the, they still owe him a World Cup qualifying campaign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But unless he pulls something out the heart tomorrow, then he's got that World Cup qualifying campaign. And then if he doesn't qualify, he's out the door. If he doesn't, if he doesn't pull something out the hat, he's gonna get the Celtic joke. 
Juan's big Andrews out the door in three months. Listen, big Andrews here for 10 in a row, my man. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, Chris, see if Scotland do win, right? If we beat England, right? Yes. We'll tell the big brother story next week. If Scotland, if Scotland beat England, I'll reenact the Big Brother story. Right, you. okay. Oh, oh wow, there oh. you go. Heard it here first. Scotland! 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 <laughs> Audio Frontier.